Good morning, my dear students, and welcome you all to Zenit Academy. We have changed the name from Zenit Tutorials to Zenit Academy Online. Myself, Irfan Jaipuri, I am a teacher at, for social science at Zenit Academy. So, students, we are going to study about history class ICSE board for class 10, chapter 14, major agencies of United Nations. What are the three major agencies of United Nations? its principle, its objective and its functions. So let's study these three agencies in detail. So first look at their logos. UNICEF, World Health Organization, UNESCO. Please remember these logos very, very clearly uh, and you will have to remember this for a very long period of your life. So let's start with United Nations Children's Fund, which is called UNICEF. So UNICEF was created by United Nations General Assembly in 1946. Why it was created? Why it was established? It was established to help the children post-war Europe, post-Second World War, the children of Europe. By 1950, the United Nations realized that the same program could be extended to children to across all developing nations of the world because uh, developing nations during those times were facing huge issues in terms of child welfare. Later, the name was changed to United Nations Children's Fund. It is today called United Nations Children's Fund. However, its acronym stands as UNICEF. It is headquarters in New York and it has 200 offices across the most developing nations of the world. So let's move forward and understand its function. So let's first look at the objective. The main objective of UNICEF is to look after children's welfare, especially in community-based service in developing countries by providing people with low-cost community-based service in maternal and child health nutrition and immunization so students will have to remember this entire objective by heart for your examination so now let's move forward and understand the functions of unicef unicef provides services in primary healthcare nutrition basic education sanitation and women's development but where in most of the developing nations across the world so let's remember this primary healthcare nutrition, basic education, sanitation and women's development. This is their prime focus for UNICEF. Now let's move forward and study about the other functions of UNICEF. UNICEF works for the protection of children in respect of their survival, health and well-being. It provides funds for training for health and sanitation workers, teachers and nutritionists. Right kind of training is very important for these sect of people. Child immunization against preventable disease. There are a lot of disease across developing nations, especially in the African continent. And UNICEF, uh, the leading goal for UNICEF is child immunization against preventable disease. This is the leading uh, goal and objective of UNICEF. Provides technical supplies, equipment, other aids ranging from paper for textbooks, equipment and medicines to health clinic, remember this, pipes and pumps for bringing clean water to villages. Clean water is a major major issue across the, across the world, even in, in certain parts of developed country, clean, getting clean water is a major issue. So UNICEF works primarily on these points. Now let's look at the other main functions of UNICEF. It assists government to plan, develop and extend community-based service in the fields of maternal and child health, nutrition, clean water, sanitation. It actually helps the government, provides help to children and mothers in emergency arising from natural calamities, civil strikes, epidemics and pandemic. Right now we are also undergoing, a, we, are, we are seeing a huge pandemic going across the world. So UNICEF is working in very close hand with the government of all the countries. Efforts to prevent diseases like tuberculosis, malaria, skin disease is also very important for UNICEF. Because of all these functions and because of the effort that it takes with, with different government, UNICEF was awarded 
the Nobel Peace Prize in the year 1965 and Indira Gandhi Peace Prize in the year 1989. So please remember UNICEF is a, one of the most important agencies of United Nations that works with the government of developing nations. So this was all about UNICEF. Now we move to the second agency of the United Nations which is WHO. Now let's look at what is WHO. Most of you students would have learned, heard this name WHO and in, even, especially during these last 5-6 months. WHO is, stands for World Health Organization. It was established in seven, seven, on 7th April 1948. Hence, on 7th April, the, it is also the world also celebrates this day as World Health Day. So now, similarly, let's look about, let's look into what WHO is all about, its, its objective, its principle, and its functions. So let's look at the, some of the most important functions of WHO. It helps country to improve their health system by providing and building infrastructure. Infrastructure is very very important to provide the right healthcare services. Hospitals, institutions, laboratories, research labs, very very critical to actually give out the right health uh, services. Manpower also is very important. Manpower is given by WHO. Let's mark this manpower institution and services. WHO launched a program to immunize children against six major diseases. Some of, after doing a lot of research, WHO realized that there are six major diseases across the world which needs to be prevented. What are these diseases? Measles, diphtheria, tetanus, tuberculosis, polio and whooping cough. These are six major diseases which the WHO works and the, uh, the focus is here. The main focus is here. So uh, let's move forward and look at the other functions of WHO. Uh, the other functions of WHO, it promotes research to cure and prevent disease. Research is very, very important. To get the right medicines, the right vaccines, you have to undergo a lot of research. Safe drinking water. I spoke to you about earlier also. Safe drinking water is the, one of the most important needs of today's time safe drinking water because if the right drinking water is not available then there is a possibility of rampant disease epidemic and pandemic that can spread across the globe and adequate waste disposal if you see students in the last one to two years they have been strong focus on not to use plastics not to dispose of your waste your food waste in a in a right way very important because this is creating a big big hazard it organizes conferences, seminars and training for healthcare personnel from different countries so that the knowledge can be shared, information can be shared, know-how can be shared, people can understand from uh, doctors from one country can understand if there are other countries who are doing much better, they can learn from them. So very important, WHO organizes conferences, seminars and training for healthcare professionals. So. Students, let's move forward and study more about the other functions of WHO. It aims at fighting disease and preventing them from spreading. Malaria Eradication Program. So, Malaria Eradication Program is one of the most important program that WHO has undertaken. So let me mark this, uh, students, please remember this. WHO also defines the standard for medicines and biological products because every medicine that is produced, vaccines that are produced have to meet the certain standards because these are very very important tools in fighting diseases. Special efforts in combating diarrheal diseases. Now what are diarrheal diseases? These are diseases related to your stomach and your intestine because of bad water, bad food, no sanitation, no hygiene. This are the major diseases, diarrheal diseases is rampant across the world, specifically in the African continent. Let's look at one more very important functions of WHO is that it comes out with health journals which is called Bulletin of the World Health Organization. This is the, the main purpose of this bulletin is to spread health consciousness among human beings and among people across the world. How do you need to take care of your health? How do you need to improve your immunity? 
how do you need to take care of sanitation and hygiene in your home, in your house and in your surrounding areas. So students, this was all about WHO and its functions. Uh, now we move to the third agency of United Nations, which is called UNESCO. And let's look at what UNESCO is all about. UNESCO, this is a symbol of UNESCO, 4th November 1946 when it was established, had, uh, its headquarter is in Paris. Now look, let's look at the main objective of UNESCO. It's the main objective of UNESCO is peace and security in the world. That's the main, main objective. Please remember this peace and security in the world by promoting collaboration. Now, what is collaboration? Is to bring countries together. It's to bring countries on a common platform and uh, promote peace through education, exchange of education, science, culture, and communication. So, when countries come together, there is a lot of exchange that can happen, and that's how peace and security in the world can be established. It also undertakes further to respect justice, justice rule of law and human rights for all human beings across the world so this is the main objective peace and security in the in the world and justice rule of law and human rights rights for all human beings so st students let's look at the functions of unesco first function is education removal of illiteracy by encouragement of adult education distance education and open school system now what are these three things adult education is Across many countries, even today, there are a lot of adults which are illiterate. That creates a lot of issue in terms of justice, respect, day-to-day uh, -day functioning of those areas. So adult edu ed education is one of the major focus of UNESCO. Distance education, even in today's world, there are many, many places across the world where education cannot be imparted physically. So distance education has been created, where, edu where communication tools are used to impart education. Open school system. Now, what is open school system? Is that it allows people from all age group, men, women, children, to come together and learn. And there should be common spread of education. Emphasis of education on women and girls. Let me mark this very important because if women are educated, if women are uh, a given opportunity to develop, it helps to develop the entire nation, which in turn helps to develop and improve the standard of living for and across the globe financial assistance for children who are disabled very very important we cannot ignore disabled children and hence unesco provides financial assistance very important uh, thing that unesco does so students let's look at the other functions of unesco let's look continue with education it provides grants and fellowship to teachers and students so that they can study further, do more research, do PhDs and more uh, deeper understanding of the education. Organization of library system, very, very important, very critical. It also organizes book fairs and festival. Why is book fairs and festival important? During festival, there are a lot of exchange of knowledge. Book fairs is also similar. Books from different parts of the globe are brought to us common place where people come buy books, sell books, exchange books, learn about new books, new writers, new authors, new research which is happening across the world and encouragement of science education. So let me students mark this. The world has evolved because a lot of focus in the last 200 years have gone on science and to continue this UNESCO knows that the importance of science education because this is one of the most important way of improving sanitation, hygiene, good food, good drinking water, good communication, respect for people across the world can come up. So science education is absolute critical. Let's look at the scientific activity which UNESCO focuses. It organizes seminars and conferences for scientists and researchers from various countries to come together. Korea is one of their official monthly magazine. Here also when scientists come together, they exchange of science knowledge, exchange of technology knowledge. Promotes basic research in the fields of geology, mathematics, physics and oceanography. Very very important things in understanding the how, the how the planet works, how earth is working to forecasting climates. 
helps in correcting imbalance in scientific and technology manpower. Different nations are rich and poor. To maintain balance and to help the poor nation in terms of technology and science manpower, UNESCO works very very strongly in the back end. Encourages study of social science. Why this is very important is to combat all forms of discrimination. Social science is one of the major major tools to, to remove discrimination across the world in terms of rich poor, black white, in terms of your skin color. So this is very important in terms of your casteism. So UNESCO is very important agency and these are some of the most important functions that it is working on. So now let's move forward and understand more about UNESCO. So as I spoke to you about communication, science and then communication. Communication has helped the world become smaller and more richer. And UNESCO works in back end to help improve the communication standard. They trains technician deals with both software and hardware aspects of informatics. Right hardware is provided, right software is provided. It improves the quality of press, films and video services. Very important to spread and give out the right communication. Assist developing countries to develop com communication. Very important to help developing countries to bridge the gap and get the right communication tool in their countries. Upholds the freedom of press and independence of media. Right freedom of press is very important for any nation to prosper. So these were some of the main functions of UNESCO. So students, we have today studied about uh, UNICEF, World Health Organization and UNESCO. Now let's look forward and study and look at glance. Uh, let's glance at some of the most important points for of all these three agencies. So let's look at these three agencies one more uh, one more time some very important points which we, I have no, put that down. UNICEF was created by United Nations General Assembly in 1946 to help the children post World War II in, of Europe. But by 1950, United Nations decided to extend this program to to children for all across all developing nations. So these are this is a major point of UNICEF. World Health Organization was established 7th April 1948, headquarters in Geneva. Please remember that aims for attainment of physical, mental and social well-being of the people. Direct and coordinate health worker on international scale to eradicate disease and promote good health. So these are a few important points for UNICEF and WHO. Similarly, let's look at UNESCO. Was established in 4th November 1946, headquarters in Paris to contribute to peace and security in the world by fostering cooperation among nations through science, education and cultural development. So students, this was all about United Nations and its major agencies. We studied about UNICEF, World Health Organization and UNESCO. Thank if you, you like our video, please share, subscribe, uh, continue to follow our channel Zenith, uh, Zenith Academy Online.com on YouTube and study hard. Thank you.